there anybody joining us for the first time in this class? Uh, where is Gary? I can't find him. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, how was your weekend? I think you, you all had a good time. Yeah, we are continuing from it's last working. week. <laughs> we are continuing from last week. I think last week we talked about finance. And today we are going to talk about mobility financing strategy for low income housing delivery in developing countries. Um, unfortunately, the way developing countries have been creating a lot of confusion in academics. So we will, we will talk about that one into detail. But I will first of all want us to observe certain things. Um, this lecture is purely uh, more or less going to be a, a very interactive lecture, so I would advise each and everyone to put off your mobile phone or your, you put it on silent, because I wouldn't want any distractions like that, so please, uh, if your mobile phone is on, you just put it on silent, that would be very good. And then, um, is there any question from last week's lecture? If you have any question, anything you didn't understand, can you just bring it up? We, we, we talked about it before we move on. If there is nothing like that, I think we can now move on. Now, look at this picture. Can anyone tell me anything about this picture? Mm -hmm. It's a slum. This, this particular... <laughs> it's a slum, very good. This gentleman, are you doing something around housing? Definitely. Yeah. Okay, 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 I can see. I can see, that's good. That's good. So, you can see the picture is demonstrating a slum. And slum, can anyone also tell me why people would prefer to stay here? It means this is a structure. It is a house. Yeah, it is, it is a house where people are living. All right? And I'm, I want to find out, why do you think somebody would just go and stay in such a place like this? Maybe his occupation uh -huh. is close to the river, so he has to be there. Fishing. Really? Maybe it's availability. No, I, 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 think, I think there is no availability. It's a bad place for them. That's the right place for them to stay. Because they are not giving money, or paying any money to stay there. Circumstances. All right. Yes. Very good. Now, this place is typically of, <laughs> of a developing country. Is it agreed or? <clears throat> yes. Yes. Uh, Ambrose is saying no. Not totally. I don't know. Totally. Mm -hmm. Ambrose, can you give us any reason? Because depending on what you define, what I was saying, country. Country. very good. Country. <laughs> yes. So the definition of developing countries will tell you mm. what is the situation there. Mm. Aside this, there are other good sides about developing countries, mm. which in next subsequent lectures we will look at. So now, today's lecture this is the content of the topic, what we are going to look at. If you are able to cover everything, maybe the next lecture will continue. All right. So for us to, to be conversant with this is a research background, we are going to define developing countries in terms of World Bank definition, IMF, and then the UN. All these group of uh, organizations have given different meanings, different definitions about developing countries, and it has been now accepted that most developing countries are being located within Latin America, Asia, and Africa. For World Bank, they are using uh, income levels to define what is a developing country. For IMF, they are using uh, the capital income and all sort of uh, definitions. But those ones, uh, when you, you, you go into the vision, the, the actual notes are there where you can look at. And then one basic problem about developing countries is rapid urbanization. And this rapid urbanization is causing a lot of uh, problems. And it has been attributed that push and pull factors such as migration and high mortality rates are causing this, uh, the, the high rate of urbanization in developing countries. Right. And so because of that, out of Rapid urbanization, some of the consequences is, is as a result of low income, high unemployment, and then shortage and poor housing conditions, like the picture you just saw. All right? One of the causes is rapid urbanization due to low income 
because of that they cannot finance proper housing and they are forced because they are not employed they cannot access formal finance all right and because of that they are forced is not a will or a right as uh, my Atuya was saying is it Atuna? Mm -hmm. yes as you were attribute it's not a right or they just like the place no they are being forced by circumstances and these are some of the consequences of that so Beside that, there are some opportunities we can drive from rapid urbanization. In the case of China, where they are <coughs> taking, making consensus efforts to look at urbanization as an opportunity, they have been able to come out with a good plans in which you can just see that new industries are springing up. China is able to enter into global markets and they are making a lot of progress because they have seen urbanization as something that is good. Unlike other countries or other continents, the, 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 the situation is not that. So it has resulted in urban housing poverty. Because of that, low-income families need finance. That is very innovative in order to come out of the situation you just saw. All right. And so that is the reason why I need to teach you what innovative finance involves. Any questions so far? If there's no question, we'll move on to the courses. I think I've explained that. Causes of developing countries, low income housing challenge is due to lack of sustainable housing policy. Most of them, there are no sustainable housing policies. The policies are very structured. I mean, and then rapid growth of slums and this developing countries, lack of proper census data on low-income housing in developing countries. One key other thing is lack of tenor. When we talk about tenor, it's about ownership. All right? Your right to land. That's what we, we term as tenor. And when you don't have this tenor, you can't assess finance, particularly in Ghana, for example. Most commercial banks will say, go and bring your lease or your land papers. And once you are not able to produce that, they won't give you any loan. And because of that, we are now looking at the very innovative ways in which we can finance housing. Housing that are of low income category. Any other question? There's no question. Thank you, Francis. All right. So innovative finance is a combination of private and public funding in which the financing mechanism are bundled to deliver project more time efficiently and on value for money basis. So that is the definition of innovative finance. The sources are there. You can get the sources from housing microfinance. You can get it from NGOs and all sort of things. So there are so many opportunities available for low-income families in developing countries to finance their housing. These are some of the references. Yeah. You said there are so many opportunities in developing countries. Yes. So I can live being in a developed country. I can go to a developing country because of that to take advantage. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> people from develop, developed countries are moving to developing countries. Why? Yes, because there are opportunities there. When you take Nigeria, for example, there are a lot of foreign companies that are investing in Nigeria now, and the figures are there. All right, and as part of your next assignment for the for, for, for the next for the, not to go to ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, this one will go to the whole class. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Francis. 